Hello, uh, my name is Joseph Halliday. I'm a, a second year infectious disease fellow here at the uh, University of South Florida. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, an emerging uh, fungal infection, uh, Cryptococcus uh, gadii. Uh, particularly as part of our uh, objectives uh, for the lecture, uh, we're going to categorize uh, this emerging uh, pathogen uh, based on the current outbreak uh, going on in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, uh, as well as in Canada and Vancouver, British Columbia, and we'll describe the uh, unique uh, ecology, epidemiology, and uh, clinical manifestations. Uh, we'll also try to characterize uh, the endemic form uh, or non-outbreak Cryptococcus gadii infection uh, and as well as uh, some treatment uh, recommendations regarding uh, Crypto gadii and its uh, complications as well. Now you may be asking uh, what is the difference between uh, Cryptococcus uh, neoformans, which we uh, should know pretty well, versus its uh, cousin Cryptococcus gadii, um, and we'll try to highlight uh, some of those some of those differences as we uh, go along. Um, a little bit of background about the uh, varieties of Cryptococcus: there are four serotypes designated A through D. Uh, Cryptococcus neoformans. Uh, makes up the serotype A and D, and uh, Cryptococcus gadii is composed of serotypes B and C. Um, some background about cryptococcal uh, infection in general is that we do see uh, this organism uh, infect immunocompetent as well as immunocompromised patients. Uh, for both neoformans and gadii, there there can be a, a a variable clinical presentation from asymptomatic disease to severe disseminated disease. Um, for both, the main portal of entry is the lungs. Uh, there is an affinity for the uh, central nervous system, causing meningitis primarily. And just of note that. Um, the first case of Cryptococcus gadii was described in a leukemic patient uh, back in the 1970s uh, when it was uh, previously classified, I believe, as a variety of Cryptococcus neoformans. Now, as far as what we know to be uh, risk factors for uh, symptomatic cryptococcal infection, uh, defects in primarily cell media mediated immunity do not uh, generally differ as risk factors between neoformans and gadii. Uh, we do see uh, severe disease in our HIV AIDS population, solid organ transplant patients, uh, especially on uh, steroids, uh, patients with lymphoproliferative disorders, uh, sarcoidosis, um, patients on chronic steroids for uh, other reasons, uh, as well as uh, some more common things such as uh, diabetes uh, and cirrhosis. And we can't forget about our uh, patients on monoclonal antibody therapy as well. Now just like uh, neoformans, you uh, cannot tell the difference between neoformans and gadii based on uh, mycology. Um, they're both encapsulated and reproduced by narrow-based budding. One of the main differences between the two uh, of species of Cryptococcus um, can first be kind of looked at by their ecology, um, whereas Cryptococcus neoformans is a uh, causes infection worldwide. Uh, Gadii is more of a limited geographic distribution, as we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, they are both found in uh, in the environment and soil, 
uh, decaying organic debris. Um, uh, although, uh, as far as an association with uh, bird excreta or guano, as some may call it, uh, that is particularly uh, uh, if, uh, going on in more of the neoformans and not been associated in the gadii infections. More about this uh, uh, limited geographic distribution of uh, gadii. Um, it is endemic, or has been known to be endemic, to the tropics and subtropics um, for some time. Uh, within the Americas, uh, it's been found to be, or thought to be endemic in Mexico and Southern California and probably Hawaii. Um, a lot of our data comes from the endemic uh, infections caused in Australia, uh, also seen in New Zealand, South and Southeast Asia, uh, parts of Europe, and uh, Central and South Africa, as well as Latin America. Now, what's somewhat new and part of this current outbreak going on in the, uh, the northwest part of the uh, United States and what would be the uh, western part of Canada is that it's uh, going on in a temperate climate which is new. Uh, as far as the microbiology uh, for Gadii uh, we've started using the molecular techniques uh, to uh, type as well as subtype. Uh, there are four molecular types uh, designated VG1 through VG4 and there are subtypes within each uh, designated A, B, and C. Uh, we do see VG2 and 3 most commonly in the Americas um, and with our current uh, outbreak in the Pacific Northwest VG2 is the most common uh, being predominantly VG uh, 2A strains. In Africa, they uh, you tend to see more of the VG4, uh, and in Australia, where infection is associated with eucalyptus trees, uh, we see uh, VG1 primarily. And this is just a uh, table from up to date. Uh, showing the varying uh, f uh, frequency seen in the different uh, molecular types uh, around the world. I wanted to first talk a little bit about the uh, uh, epidemiology and some of the clinical manifestations in the endemic form of cryptogadii infection, uh, primarily in Australia. Uh, tends to occur in more rural areas associated with uh, uh, Aborigines more than you may suspect but uh, or more than common uh, in the population mainly because of the uh, eucalyptus trees being present along uh, water sources frequented by uh, those peoples. Um, one of the uh, commonly cited uh, studies regarding the epidemiology of cryptogadii uh, came to us back in 1995 in clinical infectious disease uh, where in Australia they described 121 cases uh, of cryptococcus uh, over a 10-year period as both uh, neoformans and gadii. Uh, there was a total of just uh, 20 cases but uh, what's interesting is that they were noted to all be in otherwise healthy individuals. Uh, whereas, uh, usually with Cryptococcus neoformans, there's uh, usually an underlying immunocompromised state. Um, tended to see a higher percentage of pulmonary infections as well, uh, at least in comparison to Crypto neoformans, although both have a, uh, a very high percent with CNS disease. Uh, so they really don't differ too much in that respect. Um, 
what they do differ in uh, is kind of worse outcomes in the, in the Gadii infected patients in that series. And we'll talk about this a little bit later too, but because of uh, the, the higher likelihood to form these uh, large or multiple cryptococcomas, uh, you tend to see more uh, CNS symptoms, including uh, vision loss, cranial nerve palsies, memory impairment, uh, and because of uh, obstructive reasons, they require more CNS surgery. And when seen in the lung, uh, more often got thoracic surgery. Uh, another study, uh, more recently, uh, out of Australia, back in 2012, in CID, uh, did examine Cryptococcus gadii by itself. Uh, or just identified those cases only. Uh, there was 86 over a seven year period. Um, like the previous study, the majority were in healthy uh, hosts. Uh, about 72% had no underlying condition identified. But in this series, as it's, uh, you know has a larger cohort, we did see uh, patients also with immunocompromising conditions as well. Uh, interestingly though, uh, there were no cases of uh, HIV. Um, and as far as uh, the presentation with CNS uh, and pulmonary disease, uh, it didn't differ greatly from uh, prior studies. Um, one uh, new aspect of that study was that it shed a little more light on, uh, or at least gave us a little more uh, data uh, showing that uh, uh, there were more adverse neurologic effects with cryptogadii than you'd suspect normally with uh, neoformans. Now we're going to switch to more of what's been going on on the uh, North American continent uh, with the outbreak uh, strain first started in Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, this is more in an urban and suburban setting. Uh, it's thought that the outbreak or epidemic started back in 1999 uh, on Vancouver Island and moved to the lower mainland British Columbia uh, and had been affecting residents of the area as well as travelers and uh, the domestic animal population as well. Uh, like I had mentioned before, the uh, type and subtype there is mainly a clonal VG2A strain um, there are some studies that show that it may be more pathogenic than uh, neoformans, uh, but that data is uh, uh, limited. Um, one of the first uh, uh, studies identifying uh, 218 cases from 99 to 07 uh, described uh, an average of 24 cases per year, which is uh, quite a bit higher than what you'd suspect in endemic areas, you know, including Australia, which I believe is uh, somewhere around up to five cases per year on average. Um, and over time, since really surveillance uh, really started uh, being done in the area back in 2003-04, uh, we found that there have been uh, there has been migration, or at least uh, expansion of the epidemic zone to the Pacific Northwest in the United States. And uh, many people have hypothesized why this happened, or how, I suppose, which uh, certainly possible means of uh, uh, at least bringing the, uh, the, the, the these to new areas would be, because it's more in high traffic locations, uh, it could be part of the vegetation or dirt in the wheel wells of uh, going from one area to the other, it may be associated with footwear as well, as well for the same reason, and could be associated more with construction and forestry activities as, as we know that uh, there is an uh, association between the outbreak in the northwest with uh, uh, furs 
and uh, maple trees uh, in that area. They may be asking, you know, why did this happen? Uh, as far as this outbreak, why did this happen? No one really knows. I mean, there uh, have been some theories regarding uh, uh, climate change and things like that, but nothing has really been definitively uh, uh, discovered. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, uh, the first case uh, was described in 2006 as of uh, an emerging infectious disease article in 2009 there had been 19 confirmed cases um, it has been uh, confirmed that uh, many of those uh, were identical to the molecular types on the Vancouver Island uh, as well as some uh, one seen in Washington State um, it is possible that there and, and likely that there was some endemic uh, strains in the area that had not uh, really been previously appreciated uh, because it, there have been uh, similar strains found in Seattle back in the 1971 and San Francisco back in 1990. And as of some more recent data, 2013, uh, from 2005 to 2013, there was 147 cases, and that was primarily in Washington, Oregon, California. And now that we've uh, characterized infection in, in the northwest area of the United States, and uh, generally surveillance has uh, increased in the ability to identify Cryptococcus down to the species level, uh, we're starting to see reports outside of that region. Uh, 2009, there was uh, 25 cases published outside of the uh, Pacific Northwest. Uh, majority of them were non-outbreak strains, and a majority were occurring in California, but also involved eight, seven other states, including Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Hawaii, Michigan, Montana, and New Mexico. Um, as you would suspect, uh, for a lot of them, if, if the strains were not identical to the one from Vancouver Island, they uh, had no travel to what uh, at least we had known to be non-endemic areas. Um, and you may be asking yourself, well then, what does, what does that mean particularly well? It, it seems likely that there are probably more endemic areas in the United States than we had previously appreciated. Um, California being one of those places uh, that there is likely endemic strains, uh, although travel from California to Mexico, where it had previously been known to be endemic, uh, is certainly a plausible explanation for some of the cases. Um, you know, what is more interesting to, uh, to us possibly in, in Florida would be that, uh, you know, the, would be the cases associated in the southeast United States, according to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, that was reported in uh, the one study. Um, and actually, a 2013 study actually showed uh, even more cases in the southeast. Um, so it, it may be likely that some of the non outbreak strains of Cryptococcus gadii may be endemic to parts of the southeast as well, including Florida. Uh, the one case that was reported in Florida actually did uh, occur in the in, in our area in, in Tampa, of note. Uh, this is just a geographic uh, distribution of those cases I was referring to, and this is a chart that can be found in this uh, article, but uh, generally describes the travel habits of of all of those uh, 25 patients. And this is part of the, the PLOS One uh, published data uh, regarding the uh, isolates all over the continental United States and even Hawaii. Uh, if you may notice in the top right corner that along with uh, an a high number of human cases, uh, there are 
an equally high amount of veterinary cases as well in the Pacific Northwest. And whether or not you know the veterinary cases play a role, uh, or how they play a role possibly in this current outbreak is not outbreak is not uh, really known at this point, or if it has any role at all. So, uh, just like um, Cryptococcus neoformans, uh, the strains associated of Cryptogadii in the Northwest uh, are occurring in immunocompetent and immunocompromised patients, although uh, still likely more of an asymmetric, asymmetric distribution to immunocompetent hosts, as you'd see in the endemic forms of Cryptogadii. Some recent studies have suggested a, that in a majority of the immunocompromised patients uh, that prior steroid use was uh, uh, highly associated, which uh, makes sense secondary to the cell-mediated immunity deficiency. Now the clinical presentation of uh, cryptogadii is not uh, dissimilar from cryptococcus neoformans. Uh, they both uh, can present either as pulmonary uh, or CNS disease predominantly, uh, but you can also have disseminated disease with uh, skin lesions, uh, and it also involve uh, the eye and prostate if some other cases of neoformans have been uh, reported. Um, one of the main differences is that when presenting as a pulmonary lesion, usually as a nodule, uh, gadii tends to be have more it tends to be multiple, uh, possibly more than the neoformans variety, uh, although you can see that in both. Um, the really large masses, though, may uh, really set apart gadii from uh, neoformans. As uh, one study in uh, a radiology journal in Van from Vancouver uh, showed that uh, it, w it was 12 patients only, but uh, showed a wide range of size of the lung nodules from 5 to 52 milliliters, uh, sorry, millimeters. 80% um, of them were peripheral, peripherally distributed. Consolidations and cavitation were common in 40% of the cases. Um, uh, you may also ask why, you know, why you would have, why would Gadii have these large masses and uh, the theory would be that because of the higher proportion of immunocompetent patients, there may be more of a, a robust immune response uh, responsible in part to some of the size of these nodules, uh, which may hold true as well for the CNS. Um, the main complication being obstructive hydrocephalus. That is a difficult to uh, treat without... Uh, CSF drainage. One interesting note for us here in Florida, the case in Tampa uh, was reported by uh, or seen by uh, some of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Green and Dr. Cho. It was a uh, otherwise healthy male. Uh, actually initially presented with a femur fracture. Uh, bone culture was uh, teeming with uh, cryptococci, uh, ended up being cryptogadii, BG2B, and the patient also had uh, asymptomatic lung nodules and uh, pretty and, and really uh, asymptomatic cryptococcal meningitis, or at least high risk with a positive CSF cryptococcal antigen, and he was treated su successfully. Um, this is a common chest x-ray you may expect to see with the gadii or neoformans for that matter, although this lesion is quite large and can, you can see how it can be uh, easily uh, uh, misinterpreted as being more concerning for malignancy. And these are just uh, MRI images of a case of cryptococcus gadii uh, with multiple brain lesions. Diagnosis is the same for both neoformans and gadii. Cryptococcal antigen is positive and uh, greater than 
90% of the cases. Certainly it can be uh, identified by tissue culture. Um, one of the main uh, ways, at least uh, traditionally that we can tell between Neoform and Zagatii is uh, based on a special auger, uh, the CGB auger, where uh, the Gadii colonies turn blue and the Neoformans do not change color at all. Although I imagine that uh, very shortly, or even now actually, uh, the differentiation can be made by more molecular techniques. As far as treatment, it's pretty much uh, the same as for Neoformans as of now. Uh, the most recent IDSA guidelines for cryptococcal disease treatment were updated in 2010, although uh, those are uh, likely to be updated soon. And uh, may or may not have some changes in, in relation to uh, cryptococcus gadii infection. Um, certainly for any severe cryptococcal disease, you want to treat with uh, a liposomal liposomal amphotericin product plus flucytosine for an induction period of two weeks at least, followed by a consolidation period of eight weeks and a maintenance phase of 12 months, primarily consisting of fluconazole. Um, and whether or not uh, patients have similar outcomes with uh, using voriconazole or posiconazole is really limited at this point. And they did not make a recommendation uh, back then in 2010. Uh, particularly for Cryptococcus gadii, the IDSA uh, makes a recommendation that for a single small cryptococcoma that you can use fluconazole 400 daily for 6 to 12 months. They're very large or multiple. Uh, certainly you would treat as uh, for cryptococcal meningitis or severe disease. And they may or may not need surgical intervention. Uh, now when considering surgical intervention uh, at your hospital, um, there are three things to consider. Uh, three things that are indications for surgery. Uh, certainly compression of any vital structures. Uh, failure to dec decrease the size of the cryptococcoma after four weeks. Uh, or certainly a, a failure for the patient to improve clinically uh, while in treatment. There has been some uh, published data regarding uh, antifungal susceptibilities of cryptogadii. Uh, the concern is that some of those reports have shown higher MICs to uh, commonly used antimicrobials, particularly fluconazole, although those, uh, that data is not uniform. The uh, in vitro studies on the VG2 isolates, you know, going on in the Pacific Northwest, uh, have shown higher MICs to fluconazole, though, as I had mentioned. Although the clinical relevance really is not known at this time. Itraconazole, voriconazole, posiconazole um, have been shown in studies to have greater in vitro susceptibility. Than fluconazole, but as I've mentioned, the, the clinical relevance really is not known at this time, although uh, in this setting, and, and otherwise the setting when you would tr uh, choose an alternative therapy from fluconazole for cryptoneoformins, uh, you may also uh, be acceptable to make that choice for a cryptococcus gadii patient. Other interventions such as CNS shunts are common, especially with cryptococcomas of C. gadii. Um, lots of times they are permanent. Uh, steroids as an adjunctive uh, medication for CNS disease with significant edema has been shown to be associated with uh, improved uh, outcomes. Some association with uh, poor outcomes has been seen in patients with the CSF antigen titer of greater than 256. Um, certainly immunocompromised hosts are at increased mortality risk. Uh, there is a small risk of immune reconstitution even in the immunocompetent patient. 
um, study in CID in 2013 uh, reported iris-like syndromes in eight patients um, a mean of two to twelve months into treatment and usually they, in those cases they presented as new or enlarging brain lesions female sex uh, brain involvement at presentation and higher CD4 uh, counts were associated uh, in those cases. So in, uh, in summary, Cryptococcus gatae is not uh, a whole lot different than Cryptococcus neoformin infection. Uh, although gatae is an emerging infection in the United States, uh, mainly associated with the current epidemic or outbreak in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it does infect immunocompetent as well as immunosuppressed patients, although albeit there is a, a disproportionate shift towards the immunocompetent patient for uh, reasons that are not really known. Um, Non-outbreak strains, and strains that we may increasingly come in contact with uh, outside of the Pacific Northwest um, are likely or possibly to be uh, endemic to those regions, you know, particularly California and the Southeast United States, and uh, may not differ all that much from the non-outbreak endemic forms that uh, have been reported on for a number of years in Australia, New Zealand. And as we uh, see with neoformins, the presentation is primarily either pulmonary or CNS. Uh, if you do see larger, more multiple lesions, uh, especially in immunocompetent hosts, then I would tend to th at least consider uh, Cryptococcus gatii as a more likely pathogen than neoformins. Uh, and currently, for now, the treatment guidelines are not different between the two uh, species of Cryptococcus. Uh, there is probably a role for the newer extended spectrum azoles, but that's not fully defined yet at this point, but maybe soon. Um, and particular, particular attention uh, should be made to the fact that the VG2 strains uh, may be less susceptible to fluconazole. And that is all I have. Uh, here are my references. Um, Thank you very much.